Hi, five years ago I have purchased this excellent multimeter. I saw the OLED version of the previous model and I really liked it, so I've bought the OLED variant of this newer model. I knew that OLED screens degraded over time, but this was not used 24 7, so I wasn't worried. However, Agilent didn't warn us that the displays could degrade even without being used, and this one's screen went from barely usable to unusable in two months. If I knew that, I would probably bought the LCD version, but too late now. During the search for a solution, I found people with the same problems in the EV blog forum. Here, some people claim the 1273, which I have, has the same display as the previous model, the 1253. In the 1253 comments, one user claimed there was an European store selling similar displays. He also claimed it was a very sensitive procedure and he actually damaged two displays before getting it to work. I went ahead and bought a display for 30 euros plus tax. The store has a 50 euro minimum order, but I also needed some other stuff that they sold, so no problem there. This is the display that I got. It is completely different, but hopefully the glass display itself is compatible. The size appears to be similar. I accidentally bumped the camera power supply and it stopped recording during the desoldering process of the old screen. But all I did was apply some flux in the flux cable and it was easily desoldered with my hot air station set to 350 degrees Celsius. Now, I'll remove the damaged display from the carrier board. I don't want to break the glass, so I'm going to get it a bit hotter, so the glue will let it go. The step up DC to DC converter in the multimeter looks a lot more complex than the one in the board that I bought. I'll start by removing the metal shield. Now we'll remove the new display from the adapter board that we bought and solder it in the adapter board from the multimeter. Now, I'll remove the captain tape. I've just ripped half a dozen pins from the cable. Now, I understand what the other user was talking about. I'll keep going, hopefully I can still solder the display.
As you can see, it comes off easily with hot air. First, I'll solder a couple of contacts to hold it in place. Then, I'll solder it more carefully. Now, I'll try and fill the missing contacts with tin. Hopefully, it will be enough to get a good joint with remaining wires in the damaged section of the ribbon cable. Before I close everything up, I'll check if it works. I need to be careful to make sure the battery contacts don't touch anything they shouldn't. It works, and it looks as bright as when it was new. Now I'll reassemble everything. It looks good, and it's only set at half brightness. The flicker you see are just artifacts caused by the difference between the update rate of the screen and the camera's sampling rate. It looks steady to my eyes.